You're on. You're on. Oh sh! Yeah, Not over the cars. That's over the cars. I can't see you. Oh, oh sh! Now you're over <laughs> us. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh no! Oh. You idiot! G'day, Stu here from UAV Futures, and today, well, we're going to be taking a look at the Wizard X220S. This is the part two review. So if you, have, if you haven't seen part one, go and check that out up here. I'll leave a little card or something that'll flash up. I was super impressed with this thing on paper. I mean, the components look like this should be an absolute kick-ass quad for its price, but... Since I've done that review, there's been quite a few things that I've learned about this quad. So, uh, the biggest one, and uh, this one was really kind of frustrating me actually that I didn't pick it up in the review. Something that was a little bit sneaky by Esheen in this one, they've made the arms not, well actually they've made the quad, it's not full carbon fiber. So it's like a fiberglass carbon fiber composite. And that really sucks because that one really caught me off guard. All the other quads I've reviewed on the wall, you know, so every single quad that I have on the wall, None of them have fiberglass arms, or none of them have fiberglass parts of the frame, and that really sucks because that means it's going to be a lot weaker. So that is something that I missed, and massive shout out to Bruce from RC Motor Reviews. He sort of took this thing apart, really went through all the nuts and bolts and everything about here. So I'm going to link his video down below as well, and definitely go and watch that before you buy one of these. We're going to stick it on the bench in a minute, but I did have some issues with my receiver, and also I did a little bit of a change up in here because, you know, some of the solder joints broke, which is a little bit disappointing. Now, what we're going to do in this video though, so it's going to be on the bench very quickly, but stay tuned because we're going to take it out. We're going to absolutely thrash it around and then we're going to test it on 5S as well. So I've got a 5S battery charging. I'm literally about to go out to the field in about 20 minutes time and then we'll thrash around with 5S, hand it over to Grumpy Trev, see what he thinks as well. And then most importantly, something that I think this quad, because it sort of snuck past me, what we need to do, let's do a crash test. Let's find out how strong these arms are. So we're going to keep pushing it until we sort of get to that breaking point. But I reckon by the end, you know, the aim of it is to come home with this thing in pieces and see just how, you know, how much abuse do these arms actually take? Do they hold up quite well? Or are, are they as weak as, you know, some people are saying? So I can't wait to test it out and show you guys that. Let's quickly stick it on the bench, have a look at it. All right, let's do it. Alrighty, so here it is. And very quickly before we go and rip it around, a few things I have changed. I did have some troubles when I was getting it ready because I'm literally going to go fly this in about an hour's time. Uh, I had some troubles with my radio and my receiver. It just wasn't working very well. It was getting real jittery. So I, I didn't trust it at all, especially if I'm going to be sticking my GoPro on this bad boy. So I put in the IA6C receiver for my turnage evolution. And then there was two other important parts. So the soldering job on the top of this VTX, it really isn't up to standard. So on first glance, I didn't think much of it. But now I've noticed, you know, just when I was going to put this together, this is my little plug that powers your VTX. That was about to snap off, so I simply touched it and it just broke straight off the board. So uh, I had to do some microscopic soldering on there, which looked, to be honest, for a beginner, and that's what I think this drone is aimed at. A beginner, that's not very good. And then uh, this part right here, this is a different pigtail. So my original pigtail that was on here, it broke. It broke in this little connection right here, so uh, I've had to put a spare on which is a bit of a shame because if that thing breaks as well, if that thing broke as well, you know, it makes it very hard and, and not very easy fixes. So that's pretty hard, but this one is even harder. If you don't have a spare and you try and repair that, you know, good luck. I think it's going to be very, very difficult. Now, very quickly, one other thing we should mention too, flipping it over here, Bruce in all of his, he had a whole bunch of loose motor screws on the bottom. Look, mine are okay, uh, but something I do want to point out, there is no Loctite on the end, which is a bit of a shame. So if we take this off, we can see there's no Loctite on the end. So uh, that means they're going to come out in enough vibration. So what you need to do, go put a bit of Loctite on all your motors. And uh, when you first get it, make sure that they're all secure, secured down. Look, mine were all right. But I have seen some other videos where they were just finger loose, which really isn't acceptable. Anyway, so that was some sneaky parts. What we should do now, let's cut out to the field because I really want to see how it goes because I think on paper, it looks like it's pretty good. You know, we've got the, the decent motors. We've got some, some props, which looks like some people are having some issues with though, but a CCD camera, an Omnibus F4, you know, everything looks like it should be good, but how's it going to actually hold up? Except for the carbon fiber, that part, you know, I'm a little bit frustrated about. Anyway, let's cut down to the field and absolutely rip it around in three, two, one. Radio out here in the field and uh, let's do it. Let's rip around the Wizard X220S. We'll fly it around. We'll head over to Grumpy Trev. We'll do some 5S and then what you guys want to see and what I want to do too, we're going to absolutely punish this thing and see just how much can these sort of 
foam filled fiberglass arms with the carbon on the outside take so you know is it going to be strong or are we going to go home with this thing in pieces all right let's do it all righty so here we go on board and uh, i decided to start the clip here because this part's actually pretty important when we come across and clip this gate i really want to take note of that because we're going to come back and talk about that and what happened to the frame just on a few clips of that gate anyway so flying around you can see this is on 4s so we do have it looks like it's got plenty of speed i think the props sort of go pretty well i did have some issues i noticed when i took it out and uh once i brought it in after the landing i definitely had some stress marks on the props and i will show you some dvr as well i'll probably put that up in the corner talking about the reception but just talking about the flight characteristics of this quad uh look it seemed okay it definitely wasn't bad it wasn't jittery i didn't have any gyro issues or anything like that i felt like i could fly it quite fine maybe a little bit sluggish or uh, I was expecting a little bit more power. It didn't quite feel as smooth in the air. It definitely wasn't a bad flyer and it was still better than a lot of the other quads that I, you know, a lot better than what I started with and it's still a really good quad and I do think it flies better than the original Wizard uh, with all those other parts aside in terms of its flight performance. I do think it was an upgrade in terms of flying around over the original Wizard. Uh, I'm going to put some DVR on now and look it's not synced up but what I do want to notice I did get a bit of noise when I was flying around and that became even worse when I was on uh, on the 5S battery the noise was a lot more apparent there's another little clip on the gate on the DVR uh, and one thing I want to point out with the Pagoda antennas they, I didn't feel like they got I, I think the Onways or some of the others definitely gave better and you can tell that these were a cheap knockoff on it I was getting a few, a few glitches can't talk properly but you really needed to screw the antenna down because of that little rubber grommet that's in the back of the FPV where the FPV antenna goes you really need to screw it down to make sure that you're getting a connection and then the other big issue is like when you're flying around look at the top of the screen you know where my voltage is and my voltage gets absolutely smashed here because this was a very very hungry quad but uh you've got that big black part hanging out over the top of the, sc of the screen which was a massive shame if you're going to be using the GoPro but Look, overall, it flew pretty well. It felt fairly responsive. Uh, the shame about the components in it, but in terms of flying, I found it was quite an okay quad. It did feel a little bit sluggish, uh, but, you know, nothing bad. I definitely wouldn't be complaining, especially when you look at the price. I mean, for, was it $175 or something like that? This thing, it really was an absolute monster, but it did destroy your batteries. I mean, I think I come in at about 8 volts or something on a 4S. I really wasn't paying attention. Alrighty, so I've just flown around. I did nick one of those gates and look what's happened to the top antenna right there. So that part's a little bit disappointing. But what we'll do, let's hand it over to Grumpy Trev and see what he thinks. This little bit of noise there, Ned. Do you have any noise? Yeah, out a bit. Oh, that's better. Oh, geez, got a bit of grunt. Well, is alright. Yeah, I'm so far I'm impressed. The, uh, the build doesn't look as good as the original one. Yeah, the handle's alright. Pretty quick. It's quicker than what it looks. How did you find it? Yeah, I found it pretty, pretty responsive. Yeah, I don't mind it at all. Geez, for a first time quad, you could do a lot worse than this. It uh, did. We did break that back part though. Yeah, this one, it probably does look a little bit fragile compared to the very first uh, wizard. Is it smooth in the air? Yeah, look, I, it's nice to fly. It's quick, very quick in fact, very responsive, rolls easy, comes you, out of the rolls really nice. You're not, are you getting any gyro issues or it's playing up or doing anything it shouldn't be doing? No, look, all, all, all I can complain about is I'm getting a lot of noise, which is a little bit annoying. It's a lot faster than I thought it was going to be. I reckon this is a, an improvement on speed on the uh, original one. And probably, it's probably handles a bit better too. Oh, I'm very impressed with uh, its handling ability. You were ready to slam this I've, thing. Well, it's the, I've seen a few reviews on this already, but no one's really flown it as hard as what we're flying it here. Like we're giving it stick. I'd like to see how it's going to end up uh, at the end of the day because mm -hmm. uh, this thing's going to be put through a uh, pretty hard test. Hey, but look, it flies great. Hey, I'll give this probably a six or a seven, somewhere mm -hmm. between. It's, it's not. That's all it really deserves. It flies okay, but a few things like the frame I'm looking at as well. Mm -hmm. It's alright. Look, it's not a shit box. You could do a lot worse than this. If they did like an, a, a better version, what do you think they could improve on? I'll give it some carbon fibre. Yeah. To start with, because that top plate. Uh, all Stu did was, Stu broke that, but he hit, <laughs> he hit a gate, something we do all day, every day nearly, and that shouldn't have broken. Yeah. It had have been a decent plate, it wouldn't have broken, so. How was your um, reception actually? Because that's something people didn't like, that pagoda antenna. How did you find it, the reception with that? No, no problem. Reception was good. Tried some good pagodas, and they've been okay. They worked really well. These are copies, and that's what you can expect. I'd stick with it on way, but it was okay, but not outstanding. 
Alrighty, so we've done that. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna do some 5S runs and then uh, I guess what the exciting part is, let's see what it takes to sort of see, let's find out how strong this frame actually is. Now, if you're gonna go 5S, uh, I definitely think on this, this quad, look, the props, I've changed the props out here to Cyclones because I knew that the other ones were gonna absolutely destroy my battery. So I had on just some two blade Cyclones right here on a 5S. You can see it is absolutely killing it in terms of speed, but it is definitely, definitely going to destroy your battery and whilst flying it around like this too I did notice I got a ton more noise in the FPV feed so it definitely wasn't as easy to fly felt a little bit more unruly and uh, definitely a lot more sluggish I felt a lot better craft out there on 5s but in saying that it is nice to see you know a, a ready to fly 5s capable quad because we're not getting too many of these I think towards the end here you know I do a few little punches then I decide to sort of rip it around around the very outside of the track to give you sort of an idea of the speed and uh, this battery I think it was like an 1800 battery it, I've cut out a bit of the fly but it really starts to die here and that's why it fell out of the sky right here so I was just one of the cells was almost dead it was very very puffy when we got to it oh that's hot that is hot. Got it. That's puff. <laughs> okay, this thing does destroy batteries, and that's not it. That's like uh, we took off those old props as well. Hold that, Lockie. <laughs> that's a bit bit puffy. Mm, the motors don't feel hot. Righty, now let's get on to the good stuff. The crash test. So this is it when it's just bouncing into the ground. Whoa. Alrighty, so uh, that wasn't like a hardcore crash, but um, you can see that didn't survive very well. I do keep wanting to push it somehow. We'll find a way to break it a little bit more, but we've got our battery and also our antennas. So you know, that's that's not off to a good start. All right, so uh, <laughs> oh, we've got still no got some video, which is a good thing. So we're going to probably strap the battery somewhere, probably underneath, and we'll see if we can break the frame or, you know, see how the arms go. The top plate. Break the frame, it's <laughs> already. <laughs> So uh, yeah, we'll see, what, we'll see how we can go with the rest of it. Alright, let's uh, take two. Now, I felt really bad about this one. This one's dead smack into a tree. No fire, no fire. Oh. All good. All good. The arms are still intact. I would say you haven't really increased the damage on this at all. All right, so uh, that hasn't done too much. It's a little bit dirty, but we'll uh, fly it up and then just let it fall out of the sky, maybe. Because sometimes that breaks a lot of arms. I know if they land, unluckily. This one, look, we have to get a little bit creative because that actually ripped out some of the motor wires or the ESC wires off the board. So uh, we couldn't fly it anymore, even though, look, the frame was still totally fine. So we had to get a little bit creative with how we decided to take it up and drop it from the air. You're on. You're on. Oh, shit. Not over the cars. That's over the cars. I can't see you. Oh, shit. Now you're over us. Oh, oh no. Okay. All right. So uh, those shenanigans aside, we just fell from a, a pretty high spot. Thanks very much, Liam. And uh, the the arms are okay at the moment. We'll see what we can do. That might be the last test because that was pretty sketchy. But uh, yeah, that was okay. Alrighty, so there it is. There's my Wizard X220S video and uh, hopefully you guys like those shenanigans because it's not often that I will intentionally set out. My heart was a bit broken, intentionally set out to test just how far we can push a frame and push it beyond the breaking point. So uh, look, and I definitely don't recommend strapping quads to other quads, going up in the air and flipping around because that was definitely sketchy, a lot of fun, but hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Now, would I say this is drone of the year? Absolutely not. You know, it looked so good when it was first on the bench until, you know, I missed those arms, like I mentioned at the start of the video, which really sucks. And looking at the frame integrity, it's this, especially the top plate, it is definitely a massive letdown. So if you're going to do one thing, if you're going to get one of these wizards and you want to upgrade it in one way, you know, definitely tighten up all those motor screws because people have had issues with those. But 
Ditch the props because look, the props did get some uh, some bad looking stress marks in them. Ditch the props and uh, I would say put on the original wizard's top plate. It's not going to fit perfectly, but uh, if you can drill out a few little holes or something, you might be able to jerry it up because anything is going to be stronger than this top plate. That is just way too thin. I'm pretty sure, look, I can snap the rest of that off there. That is way too thin and uh, that's just going to be asking for trouble. So try and upgrade that. But the interesting thing, crashing this into the tree, the arms, which were like the biggest piece that everything was sort of saying, Stuart, what about the arms? You know, they're going to break first. They held up pretty well. So I think I'm going to have to do some more investigations. I can't give it my drone of the year because, look, it just, it was way too breakable. It did look like it had some good stuff. Motors, upgraded motors, upgraded flight control, upgraded VTX, the camera, soft mounts, the pagoda antenna. Everything looked like it was meant to be going very, very well, except the letdown with the frame and I think the overall build quality. So I had some of my solder connections come loose, which was a bit of a shame. So I think overall, I'd give this one a bit of a miss, which is, you know, a massive letdown because I was really excited, hoping that this would be such a good drone like the original Wizard was. Anyway, hopefully you guys like that. What do you think about the Wizard X220S? Part of me wants to like take these components off, fix them up and use them on a different build or build it with my, you know, build it with a whole nother frame because I think there's still some good stuff in here. It's just the build quality that's let down. So maybe a good recommendation if we could buy like the Wizard kit and we could just put it all together ourselves. So Ishin, if you're listening, I would say maybe sell this as a kit and let us builders, us pilots put it together because we could probably make something, you know, with a lot more attention to detail, fix all those things up and uh, just give us a different frame because that one is an absolute must. Anyway, hope that you guys like that. Subscribe for more FPV related content and uh, FPV shenanigans and as always, Happy flying. Alrighty, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. Definitely subscribe if you're new to the channel and check out these videos. And I'm also gonna leave a little link here to my Patreon page because I've got some fantastic Patreon supporters and I like to give back to them as well. So if you wanna join the UAV Futures family, there's things like bonus Velcro straps, little bundles of FPV goodies and things like that that also get sent out. Anyway, happy flying.